All right, you guys, excuse this lighting in here. I'm in my little computer closet or whatever, but I um just, excuse how I look too. I just got back from the beauty supply store. I'm about to do some passion twists in my hair again, but I have a phone call coming up in about seven minutes here, and I figure why not try to record it? So if she's okay with me recording how this phone call goes, then um you guys will be able to see pretty much how the phone calls with kind of talking to me about starting your own your own hair care lines work but nevertheless um it is 1 54 and our phone call begins at 2 p.m so i'm gonna call her and i'm gonna ask her a few things first before the phone call really gets started so you guys can kind of get a feel for how the phone calls go and i think i mentioned in another video pretty much that nothing is held back except for asking me personally about how i make sweet sugar um other than that nothing is held back but i did want to show you guys some of the questions like how she put it in here because there is a spot for um asking three major questions that you want to ask so i'm going to show you guys that so um these are the three questions that she asked and this is pretty much what we're going to go over in the um, phone call. So just to give you guys an idea of the type of questions that people do ask me um, and all that good stuff. Hopefully my kid don't act crazy while I'm doing this phone call. But I've got to write a few things down really quick. All right, so the phone call is about to start, but um, so usually before I get started with the phone calls, I like to go over the questions that are going to be asked so that I am in the correct boundaries when I'm talking to the individual so that they know exactly what they're looking for. Um, and I also make sure that I kind of pull up some sources and resources so that I can give to the individual as well, just so that, you know, I'm truly helping the person out and not just doing, yes, babe. Give you some what? Some what? So you guys, they didn't answer. I'm glad you called back. I just had sent you an email. I don't know if you had got it, but I'm like, maybe she's busy right now. I'm hoping I didn't call her at the wrong time. Um, so I wanted to ask just a few quick questions before we get started. Um, are you subscribed to my YouTube channel? I am. Alrighty, cool. Thank you so much. And would you be comfortable if I recorded this for YouTube? Sure, no. No, I don't mind at all. Alrighty, cool. Punker is, we have to put that we're using Punker Pro Plus. Okay. Um, so we're using Punker Pro Plus. Um, yes. And um, basically we're making a product that it has um, honey. And of course, when you we, we know that when you put your hand in a product, you know, you're exposing it to more bacteria. So mm -hmm. Making some you know, prototypes, and I made one where I had just used, I cannot pronounce the word, it's like P H E X. Phenoxyethanol? Yes. Okay. But yeah, I'm excited to help her out because I really, really want her to succeed. And I'm excited that she's like pushing towards to do it. If you are in this predicament where you're just trying to figure it out, don't quit, don't give up, keep going because why not? It's enough out here for all of us and I'm eager to help in any way that I can. Not saying that I know everything or anything like that, but you do need that help. Sometimes you do need to be able to talk to somebody because I didn't have that help and I really wish that I did. So that's what I'm trying to be for you guys if you're, you know, trying to figure out your own hair care brands and all that stuff. Um, but yeah. Do you want me to start over? Um, you can just finish off where you left off at. So I know you said that you were using Phenoxy Ethanol. So did you use a Phenoxy for one of the prototypes and then Germal Plus for the other? Yes. Okay. So I just used the Germal Plus for the other one and just reached it. So I'm not going to tell uh, the way to let that sit. But the other one was just uh, the Phenoxy still. <laughs> um, that one spoiled in three weeks. Um, and that was before, let me mention this as well, that was before I realized about percentages and how far you use 5% of it into your um, products. So I'm just recently using the German Plus, so I'm hoping that works. But what I don't want to do is that I get, get this product out, mm -hmm. and then someone puts it on their shelf for three months, and then they open it, and then boom, you have a aroma that is not pleasant. 
Right. When you were in the midst of formulating, mm-hmm. did you have a scientist help you, or did you, you just experiment like I'm doing? So, to be honest, at the beginning, yes, I experimented just like you did, and I had even worse than what you had. My products blew up all over the place, and I was kind of ready to give up, but at least when you're starting, you had preservatives. I didn't even have preservatives. I was under the impression that antioxidants would do the job, and that definitely didn't. So, what I did do is hire a chemist, and it was quite expensive, but I wasn't... I just really wanted to get it you know I really wanted to understand it and I really wanted to make sure that I was doing this correctly because I didn't want to give out a product and then somebody here falls out and I'm you know responsible for that um but you do want to make sure that do you do you use the liquid journal or do you use the power powder form for that one Okay, so um, I've never worked with Germal plus before sometimes you can save the formula sometimes you can't um but did you use enough of the phenoxy in the uh, product that went back in three weeks or do you remember the percentage did you use did you not use a percentage did you just use a little bit do you kind of remember um at that time i didn't i wasn't aware about percentages i had to um find out how to calculate percentages in like excel sheets mm-hmm. so i found out how much i needed so it's it okay i'm not sure if you know this it's okay if you don't is it okay to combine Every preservative has its set uh, effectiveness. So when they're already, like Germal Plus, for example, is already combined with a few other things, to put them together just because it can also destabilize the product when you're putting over the amount of, okay. yes. Yeah. There is a website, um, I don't know if you purchased your ingredients from, but there is also an ingredient, let me actually give you the right name of it really quick so you can write it down. But it definitely helps you with percentages and this is, it will definitely come in handy. So I'm glad that you said something. And then you'll click on that. And then this is basically you creating your formula. So when you have, you know, I always start my formulas off writing them down on paper. And then I'll go into a calculator and just, you know, calculate my percentages. So this helps you out. You just put in the size or the amount of the ingredient or the product that you're trying to make. So let's just say you're going for an eight ounce and then put all of your percentages in and then hit the calculate button and it'll do all of the math for you. Um, I would definitely suggest always, always, always measure in grams just to be more accurate. I never measure in ounces. I always measure in grams. Now, I, I purchased a pH meter mm-hmm. and you know, to see, to they say that certain, um, preservatives work at certain pHs. Yes. So for that, would you just like take a little bit of distilled water and put a little bit of your product in it, mix it, and then capture the pH to that? Now, since I'm more aware of those things, I actually always test my pH. Even now when I have sweet sugar and I've been making it for quite a while while now, I still test the pH of every batch that I make. Shipping. So I don't know if your, your um, deep conditioner, which it sounds amazing, I actually like to purchase. Well, thank you. Um, I don't. <laughs> How do you, you're welcome. How do you ship it? Because like, I don't want my stuff to melt. Mm-hmm. Like special packaging. So I was always worried about that as well when I first started because honestly, when I I had products way before this and I shipped it out, it was like my very first order of my very first deep conditioner, and it was horrible. And I'm not even afraid to admit it. It was completely awful. And I shipped it, and it spilled all over the package of the customer. She was like, "This is 100% awful. I would never purchase from you again." Like it was a really bad experience, and I cried so much because I'm like, "What the heck did I do wrong?" Or would I always do with sweet sugar to just to be on the safe side? Even though I have the liners, I always bubble wrap them every time I ship them off. I always bubble wrap, and you can just get any bubble wrap i always get mine from walmart but you can get it from anywhere and it's you know too watery as well because if it's a little too liquidy then it definitely will kind of spill out um and then there are also what's up girl there are also um websites where you can purchase the um shrink bands and you can put that around the product as well to try to make sure that it's protected as well uh, one more call i'll probably call you again next time (laughs) Um, you have great information. Thank how did you. you and this is probably far along, you're welcome, probably far along in my walk. But how did you start getting your products on the shelves of these supply stores? Okay, no problem at all. So, um, and I actually thought that I was trying this way too soon because when I pretty much relaunched my business, I relaunched it November the 12th and I was pretty much in a beauty supply by what February, I believe, maybe March. Um, and I thought that I was moving way too fast, but 
what I would, the advice that I would give is just don't take no for an answer. But I did um, send him a message and he was like, okay, well, you know, let's have a meeting and come in and present your product to me. And I was super nervous. Um, I was afraid he was going to say no. And at the time, I was not confident in my packaging at all. But I was like, you know what, I'm going to take it because I know that this is a really good product. And so I went and sat down with him. The beauty supply stores, they don't really... From my experience with the ones that are not black owned, they don't really care so much about how well the product will perform. They care about moving the product off them shelves. Whereas with the black owned beauty supply stores, they want to know how it's going to perform because if they don't like it, they're not going to sell it to their customers because they know that their customers are going to want, um, you know, quality products. Um, but I wanted to also make it know make it known in my messaging when i reached out to them that i'm very confident in my product as well um and i definitely don't think that you know a lot of people will say that you have to wait a year before you reach success or a year and a half or two i i honestly don't follow that i think that if you're confident enough in your brand and yourself and your products shoot for the stars because you just never know what can happen so how do you make big dashes how are you doing that in your own home? It takes a lot of work and a lot of time, and I'm trying to move out of my home. So let's say you are trying to make your gallon of your, let's say you're making a shampoo first. Um, go ahead in your calculator. Actually, just go to Google and do ounces to grams, and then type in 128 ounces, and it'll give you the amount of grams that you need. And then take that gram number and put it in the calculator and put your percentages, and then that'll make you your total um, gallon of product. Wow. Yep. Thank you so much. No problem. problem. And I take your time for granted. I'm, I watch your YouTube. I actually finished watching the video where you all went into the hair and spoke. So I finished that. And I appreciate your, child, your channel. And oh, thank the you. And I will keep watching. Yeah. And I probably will call you again in the future. <laughs> no problem at all. Thank you so much. Oh. Have a good one. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. 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 You was all up in the phone call, girl. Look at the pictures. Yeah, I looked at the pictures. I see your pictures. Yeah, that's really pretty. So we ready to go get ice cream now? Mm -hmm. You need to wipe your face off. You got yogurt all over your face. Go get some wipes and wipe your face, girl. So she was very, very sweet. I'm rooting for her. You go, girl. I know you are going to make some brown products. And I cannot wait until you thrive. Um, I have nothing but faith in you. You already know what you're doing. You're already there. So congrats to you um, I'm excited to see what you come out with and I can't wait to be a customer So that's gonna be exciting. I just wanted to record this video and I'm glad that she gave me permission to record it So that you guys can kind of get some insight if you're kind of stuck or you need some help or some guidance Again, I don't claim to know everything what I do know. I don't mind sharing again. I don't mind sharing um I mean, why? I don't know. I just don't feel the need to like hide anything. I don't feel the need to be selfish with anything because again, there's plenty out here for all of us. Um, look at all of when you go in a beauty supply store, look at all of the hair care brands on the shelves. Like, come on now. There's room for our little hair care brands to be on the shelf too. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I definitely want to just help as much as possible. I thank you guys for supporting me. I thank you guys for even watching my content on this channel. Um, so I'm just really excited to do more videos for you guys. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And I will see you guys in my next video because this kid is rushing me. Bye! <laughs>